Welcome to Energy Stew. This is Peter Roth, your host. And I'd like to ask you, where did we all come from? <laughs> Who are we? Who is, where did Earth, how did Earth become this beautiful, important place that we thrive on in different ways, <laughs> up and down? But we are certainly here for a great purpose. And, and how did we get here? And, you know, I mean, there's certainly there's traditional science that will tell us a whole bunch of stuff that might not be true at all. <laughs> we don't know. Uh, but we do know because there is a lot of information that comes through from higher intelligences that have really taught us. And there are many signs of it on our planet as well. So to help us understand where we've been, how we got here even, is uh, a wonderful guest who has been on the show many times and uh, has a, a, a channeling recently that had so much of this information that I just felt like we needed to do a show about it. So Lowell Johnson, welcome back to Energy Stew. Peter, thanks. Um, I mean, we we kind of set the groundwork for what we're going to talk about today. Uh, but even you and I hadn't really put all of this together until recently. The information you're referring to was, and, and I really didn't consider myself a channel, channeler. Uh, I definitely have when my guides kick in and they provide me with some profound things, I know where that comes from. Uh, but I never really received it in this format. I've been chasing lots of past life regression opportunities because in my head, I was Pleiadian at one time, and I've been Lemurian at one time, and I've certainly been Atlantean in, at one time. Uh, it wasn't until, you know, I was going down these rabbit holes that Egypt pops up. And when you finally get to the point where you have some cognition of what happened with Earth, um, then I find myself where I can figure out where I was during this stage of earth evolution. So before I get kicked off on this direction, um, do you want to kind of guide the rest of your listeners to, you know, how we got here? Well, you, you actually are better at it than I am of talking about uh, what earth was before it was chosen for this job. Yeah, there was, um, Earth had been a satellite planet in the universe forever. There had been Galactic Federation, you know, modes of travel that have gone through Earth through this solar system for a long time. There was another planet between Jupiter and Mars. I will find the name of it, um, but due to negative influences, it blew up. That planet, whatever the name of it was, was meant to be Earth. That was meant to be the life-sustaining planet within our solar system. And when that happened, yeah, um, it not only blew up, it sent you know, these ripples throughout the universe. And certainly it affected Earth. It knocked us out of our orbit. And really the only things that survived intact was you know, what was inner Earth. Originally, that satellite was a seventh dimensional construct and had the ability, you know, to communicate at that level. It was never meant to be built out until this occurrence came along. And these, and these galactic uh, 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 people who, you know, uh, who traveled here, um, you use the inside of the Earth to because you know, the outside hadn't developed yet, correct. And so they made uh, they they built great tunnels and caverns, etc. Well, that was after the fact. Let's you know, back up the ship. So let's you know, assume that we understand it was true that you know Earth was this choice was made um, and there's a being that we know of uh, he, he's referred to as the dweller if you read the emerald tablets you've heard about the dweller well he was who the 
Galactic Federation put in charge of this build out for Earth. We're going to make it life sustaining. And so who did he turn to? He turned to his, you know, uh, Melchizedek brothers and sisters from the Pleiadians who understood the law of one and understood, you know, light. And they were master botanists in the universe. They were known to do that. So they were um, chosen to do the build out for the mantle. And it was gorgeous. When it was finished, that's where I saw my role. I was one of those Pleiadians, and I was a botanist who came here to build out Earth in the first place. And when it was done, the ideas we had about Eden, it was freaking beautiful, gorgeous. I thought you looked kind of old. <laughs> but it's interesting. It's starting to, it's starting to come through now it's that you've heard my story. It's interesting that people are um, not understanding how Earth, before it even developed life on, on the surface, there were very advanced civilizations all over the universe. And, um, and, and we had been there, our planet had been around a long time, but to create all this richness on the surface here is amazing. Uh, and, you know, the scientific world just sees it as some happenstance, you know, it's just, it just evolved out of its own for its own survival but it, it, there is so much magnificence to the beauty of this planet that you know that it's, it's let's call it god created you know and it's it's these advanced beings i guess you could say representatives of god who were uh well known in the universe for, for botany and can bring all kinds of of goods here mm -hmm. uh you know, um, plant life and uh, and animal life too, and um, and it just evolved. And it's not to say that science is wrong about how botany evolved, but it could have evolved um, in other places. You know, way, way, way before Earth ever existed. It and, was brought here, most definitely, Peter. It, yeah. it was brought here. And it did evolve, but it evolved, you know, ages before uh, Earth. And Well, remember, when that build-out happened, and now she was a life-sustaining entity, she had sent in life of her own. And now she is in the cosmic cycle of evolution, just like every other sentient being. So when that build out finished um earth had no residence it wasn't colonized that is when the pleiadian scientists stepped back and went this freaking place is beautiful and they petitioned for um permission to colonize there with their families that was granted however you're coming here understanding that this is an experiment and one of the projects is to de develop humanity so we're going to put these beings here. We're going to start them, you know, in, in a third dimension so they understand duality. Uh, and um, they're going to be equipped with sovereignty and free will. And let's see how it goes. Right. And these so were as you the know, earlier <laughs> versions of, of humans, you know, like the caveman, the homo erectus, et cetera, yes. who were starting to inhabit the place. And, uh, and then, well, that came later because you know we're still we these were the first colonists. Now the Lyrans that we were talking about before, their planet in a war of the heavens had been deemed uninhabitable, and they actually migrated to Sirius first, and you know were allowed to you know continue their evolution there. And when this build out on Earth took place, just like the Pleiadians did they uh, petitioned the Galactic Federation for permission to colonize here. And, you know, they came along next. Now you can almost see the cosmic brilliance to that. The Pleiadians were brilliant. And from a botany standpoint, the earth was perfect. So here come the, the Lyrans who are master architects, master builders, and they were interested in building big things. So when it came to deciding where 
these crystal temples would be located on the planet to create this seventh dimensional grid. The Pleiadians with their knowledge of electromagnetic cosmic energy and how to place the grid in place, they were the brainchild behind it from a sacred geometry perspective and the Lyrans built it. Oh my goodness. So now this place when it's finished is called Avalon. And Avalon really had, uh, it was a seventh dimensional heaven where there was a perfect balance of masculine and feminine. Um, and it was feminine divine. Uh, yes, it, divine it feminine that was really, we understood that the balance between them, that was the connection to source. It was sacred knowledge that it was divine feminine who connected the source and then it was divine masculine's honor to carry out those wishes. And while that existed here on the planet, this place was a wonderful place to live. For a while. <laughs> yes. Then there was other influence that came. You know, there was... Avalon was this perfect place that never had to worry about defending itself. Those of us that lived here were sovereign and respected everybody else and then there was an entity from mars that came and invaded you know i can't really candy coat that at all here's the beginning of some negative influences on the planet and it resulted in you know dark thoughts being seeded into you know certain factions of humanity and here's where the divide between duality really started to grow because the bad stuff was really extreme from the good stuff that we were learning but it was part of the process that's why this was all an experiment well the experiment where we are today is about to rise into earth that sentient being i referred to before is moving in her next stage of evolution. Ah, yeah. She's nearly ah, yeah. fourth dimensional. And, you know, we're going to be in a place soon where the vibrations that we're used to in this third density, they're no longer present here. New Earth has been born and she vibrates at a higher level. So, you know, the conversations that you and I have been sharing and you for a lot longer than I have are in touch with these vibrations and this frequency and you know that we're moving to a higher scale you've been trying to advise all of your friends and colleagues along the way of this sensation and now we know why that's why more and more people like me are showing up and speaking intelligently about the phenomenon that's taking place here that humans didn't create we are in a cosmic cycle of evolution and it's earth's turn so if you want to spend some time here, you've got to figure out a way that you're going to vibrate at the same level that she does when it rises. And here's where we find ourselves. Right. And, and then we have keys for that to help to help humanity um, yes. move to this higher level. And, uh, and there'll be many ways that we can transform ourselves into a higher dimension uh, when willing to. And and but the keys will be there for us to just turn the key, and um, and it'll be amazing. Uh, it's been foretold for a long time that we'll have this opportunity. Uh, but let's come back to uh, so Avalon fell apart. <laughs> yes, and well, Lemuria. While Avalon was in its prime, that's when Lemuria started to flourish. Here are these seventh dimensional beings. They're androgynous to begin with. Perfect balance of, you know, feminine and masculine. And they just flourished. That's they were crystalline, we, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, they weren't crystalline. They're seventh dimensional light beings. So really, it, they're without form. Sixth dimensional, seventh dimensional is when well, they, were, they were with, we no longer require physicality. That's, that's called a higher dimensional form. Correct. But you have to have light bodies nonetheless. But you know, from what we want to, in, from a third dimensional perspective, they're unperceptible to us. Oh, to us, but to each other, they were fine. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So they could have a society 
on this planet that was already beautiful. Yes. Enjoy it in in their androgynous state. And they did. They absolutely did. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until this faction of Lemuria that wanted to explore physicality more because the Lemurians were interested. Their culture was um, Melchizedek. And when I say that, I don't want people to think that it was a religion so much as it just had respect for the law of one, which means we know we're connected to everybody else. We know we're sovereign beings with free will. Um, that was the way that they lived, but they also understood the influence of light and what that meant. And what's coming at us now is a higher spectrum of things that humanity's never been used to before. Let me tell you assuredly that there is a difference in the light that's hitting the planet right now. And as sentient beings, we are being physically affected at a, at a cellular level. This is the preparation for when we're going to go from these carbon-based bodies to crystalline, when Earth's vibration matches Carbon is no longer, you know, the suit we're going to ride around in, and we're not far from that. Just look at all the solar phenomenon that's taking place around us. There's your evidence of what's of the things that I'm talking about are taking place. And right, and and but let's come back again to the origins of of humanity uh, as it progressed, because uh, Lemuria. Uh, didn't last on the surface of the planet, didn't last that long uh, because it was also being influenced by Atlantean um, dualities, right? Yeah, well, think of this Atlantean faction. Um, there's a few things that was going to have to take place. If they wanted to really experience physicality, they would have to drop to a fifth dimensional awareness. Because there's where physicality really and, stops. And Atlantis, they, they were able to do that. Yes. And they so split yeah. themselves into female and male forms. Um, but in fifth dimensional awareness, think about it. Atlantis was an amazing place. If we had all of our capabilities on this planet in the way that it did, and we saw each other as one, think of that here's Atlantis it wasn't that different from how magnificent Lemuria was at its inception however over time as these lessons of duality the good and the bad started to happen you also had a higher influence of service to self beings that were here and here's where greed and corruption and a lot of things just started to go off the, the wheels and there was a negative influence that you know was referred to as kind of the black magi and they influenced the atlanteans first so it wasn't like atlanteans went sour there was outside influence that manipulated them altered the dna in such a way that really they claim that there were these black boxes, if you can envision this, that was put at the base of your skull that separated your higher chakras from your lower, and it happened in the heart space. This is why you hear so much work about healing done in the heart space right now. It's to reestablish the connection between who you really are and your higher self. That's what's being healed right now. But the, the whole time that this influence was there, all that negative influence through TVs, movies, did you name the influence yes. where it comes from? So powerful. It was taking us down places. Even more so now. We didn't need to go. Exactly. Yeah. But now we see it for what it is. Those of us that kind of our awareness grew, we went, wait a minute. Man, all I see, even on TV, is produced. You know what that means, Lo? It's been produced. You're not watching life unfold as it unfolds. This has been scripted, and it's shown to you for a reason, either to sell you something or make you to believe something. So, right. whoa, uh, now when you get a handle on that, you can see where um, Earth just started over. Yeah, well, it's I'm a, not you know, saying that my guides have not suggested that where Earth finds itself right now, because during that whole Atlantean you know, meltdown, that's when they developed nuclear weapons and damaged the planet. There was a reason why there was a reset back there, too. And those lands sunk 
you know, you know the galactic federations that was responsible for the earth thought we'll just start over and that's what happened wow. so some of those civilizations found safe zones went in inner earth and you know stayed there until the vibration rose on the surface but we're at a stage now where we're going through that again and if you look at the conditions did we really learn the lessons of atlantis parts of me tell me that we didn't because right. look at all the nuclear weapons that we're threatened with from other places on the planet. We proved during World War II when we were doing testing on U.S. soil to begin with and watching mushroom clouds go up in the sky. And then we decided to drop them other, on other countries. That is when the hands-off policy from outside galactic influence with humanity was lifted. Because forever, we had been left to our own, to evolve on our own. But it wasn't like we had been dicked with along the way. We so got, here, yeah, there's finally too galactic dangerous. help. Yeah. That is and so now, clearing right. that and giving us a shot so that it would have been easy. And it had been suggested that in the past, circumstances like this in the universe, they would just wiped it out and started over again. But that's not what we've been told, that even the higher realms wish to see humanity succeed. And so that's why all this help from outside our realm in higher realms is coming our way right now. And you, there is evidence of it, right. evidence of contact with extra, you know, beyond Earth sentience. In my case, it was with inner Earth, higher dimensional beings. Um, there's a lot more of that going on. And now that we talk about disclosure in the way that most people understand it, it's whether those you know, little lights in the sky that we think are moving are, are <laughs> UFOs. We're so far behind that right now, so far behind beyond it, that contact is being made already. Uh, in my case, it was with inner earth beings. I freaking know they're here and they want us to know they're here. The time for us to reunite is just about here. And then we have friends of mine like Dave Wallace, who has, in fact, had contact with more than one beyond Earth sentient. Right. And I, I know a lot of come. people who have had that. And, um, it, and that's my point is that there's just an awareness that that really took place and people should stop thinking about whether it was possible or not and get used to the idea when it's going to happen. And the children today are being born ready for that. And, and there's uh, some... that's a good point to make because you know, that where I saw that the, the 10 strands of junk DNA that we were told that we had that carried nothing. And we kind of are human existence was on two strands these kids like you were just talking about are coming in with a lot more of their strands already activated so they're not coming in these incarnations as handcuffed as we were they have an awareness of access to higher realms yeah, and how that translates and they'll here. be end up being our teachers too and perfect it, i'm glad you said that because in <laughs> a lot of cases they were here to help their parents understand the circumstances yeah. that are taking place yeah. so it's it's wonderful to talk about this and uh and there's more even that we can look at for instance uh, the whole adam and eve story says a lot about this black magi energy disturbing adam and um and that's why there's patriarchy now on the planet and and so there's so much that that we can understand that we can then separate you know compartmentalize that this was history and we don't have to own it anymore and now we can actually reestablish ourselves in um in, in less polarity and and um be able to through that be able to move dimensionally to a higher place it's really what people like you and I, that's the purpose for it to serve. So that other people can kind of see through our lens of these higher aspects. And in a lot of cases, that was meant to be a trigger for them. 
they were meant to hear it from somebody else and then start to wonder for themselves. I'm not here to prove it to you and I'm not here to beat you over the head with what I've come to conclude. I'm here to trigger you to discern for yourself so, on what it, it, whether it makes sense or not. And that's and, what our audience right now is listening to. And so uh, as you're listening to us, you need to look at yourself and say, uh, what am I getting myself ready for now? And uh, and appreciate that you're re listening to this for a much higher reason than you might have understood before. So uh, <laughs> this is uh, I love talking about this because that's what you and I are here for, and yes. and it's great to um, uh, be the voices of of evolution, and we will continue to do that. So um, your website is uh, lowelljohnson.info. It's actually the easiest not, way to get there. It's not yes, the name you. of your website, but that's how you <laughs> do that on, you'll get to the website. And there's yes. so much on it. And, and especially the stuff that we're just talking about today is new. And, uh, and there's so much information in that about um, uh, humanity's timeline um, and how we got to be here now ready for what's next and um and i think we're all ready <laughs> i mean we want to be ready if we're not ready but uh we see from the world around us that it's time for change so well i think it's fair to say we're all ready for the world that's in our heads where all of the negative influences that we've had to suffer through to learn the lessons we did we're done with those lessons. We're done with that part of duality. And we get to go back where we recognize that we're not interested in harming others and that there's no blame to be you know, sought uh, because what we characterize as mistakes were lessons we were supposed to learn. Yes, and everything is in divine them, order. We, we learn them for everybody. Yeah, yeah. The, and, well, the time we're in now is actually perfect. Uh, because we need to see all the toxicity and all that to know better. Oh, yeah. Well, we all clearly see it now. <laughs> the good news is that Earth is coming to the conclusion of her third dimensional lessons. Yeah, that's wonderful. So, yes. Lowell Johnson, I love talking with you. And thanks so much for being back on Energy Stew. My pleasure. Thanks for inviting me, Peter. And this is Peter Roth, your host of Energy Stew at PRN.live. I can be reached at Peter at Heart River, H-E-A-R-T, river.org. I'd love to hear from you, and thanks so much for listening.